Imagine that when your daughter dies, you decide you have nothing left to lose and go after the corrupt politicians living in Brazilian society. Setting out on a personal journey of revenge, taking justice into your own hands. I'm Lancelot and in today's movie recap we'll be watching The Awakener. The story begins with the corrupt Governor Sandro being taken to the Day Unit, which stands for Special Armed Division, to give his statement regarding accusations that he was involved in embezzling funds from the Brazilian public health system. One of the agents who was involved in this operation is Miguel, our protagonist. He and his co-worker, Adu, conducted the interrogation with the governor, but the man doesn't take the blame for any of the accusations, even when shown a recording in which you can hear loud and clear that he is involved. Getting to know Miguel a little more, he has a daughter called Alice, who is the fruit of his marriage to his ex-wife. Despite the couple's separation, they split up and the man shows himself to be present in the girl's life, including taking her to a World Cup match, even though her mother resisted a little at first because she thought it was dangerous. So, the next day, Miguel leaves work a little early to take his little girl to the match. Alice is very excited, even more so because she has received a Brazilian national team shirt from her father as a present. As he was already late for the match and the traffic was as crazy as it is on match day, Miguel decided to get out of the cab with his daughter and walk to the stadium, but on the way a tragedy never imagined before happened. Little Alice was hit by a bullet that the protagonist, being an agent, couldn't even identify where it came from and although he ran to the hospital with his only daughter, it wasn't possible to save her, as the emergency room was full and this was yet another result of a loss that occurred because of that embezzlement of money that was meant for public health. Little Alice's parents were devastated and something changed inside Miguel, a thirst to take justice into his own hands. In the next few days, Governor Sandro was released and went public with a statement to the press to say that he had always had public health as his priority, which we know was a lie. As a result, a demonstration began in front of the building where he was giving the interview and with the governor's words, the people became increasingly angry and violent, leading to a riot breaking out. The protagonist ended up in the middle of the demonstration, without any intention, but as he was already overcome with grief for his daughter and believed he had nothing left to lose, he decided to go after Sandro and put an end to the politician's life. So Miguel put on a gas mask that fell near his body to get past the police who were throwing tear gas at the population and managed to achieve his goal. So this helped him not to be identified either. However, the next day, when some demonstrators are taken to the unit where Miguel works, the protagonist identifies a girl called Nina, who was making recordings during the demonstration, and when he goes to interrogate her, he discovers that she has also identified him and that there is even a piece of footage where you can see the man's face before he puts on the mask. So Miguel decides that he won't let her be detained and releases her. Meanwhile, the corrupt businessman Antero has decided that since Sandro has died, he will run for president, and that he should put his own son Antero Jr. in Sandro's place. At night, the protagonist goes to Nina and asks for her help to hack and find out who else is involved in Sandro's scheme, so that he can go after the right people. And since he doesn't have much choice, the girl ends up helping him, which allows Miguel to take the lives of more corrupt politicians. As a result, his co-workers and the protagonist are assigned to find this vigilante who is being called the Indoctrinator. Adu, who is one of his closest colleagues, comments to Miguel that he believes this vigilante to be an agent, because he is very professional in what he does, leaves no trace and has access to various models of weapons that allow him to carry out his work from any distance from the victim. As a result, Adu starts to think about who the doctrinaire's next victims will be and starts to get closer to them, so that he can suddenly find the vigilante. Then one day, when Miguel is heading towards the minister who is meeting the corrupt businessman Antero, he bumps into his colleague, but because he is wearing a mask, Adu doesn't know it's him and, with luck, the protagonist manages to escape from his friend. The next day, Miguel and Adu find out at work that the investigation they were involved in, 
which was about corrupt businessmen and politicians, has been shelved by the minister and this puts a do off. So the two of them go to a shooting range to distress and Miguel tells them that the night before he couldn't help them catch the doctrinaire because he was helping his ex-wife with something. Then something the protagonist says sparks a doubt in Adu, which leads him to wonder if his friend might not be the vigilante. To put his mind at rest, the man goes to talk to Miguel's ex-wife, who reveals that she hasn't seen him since the death of their daughter and that the protagonist has simply isolated himself. Meanwhile, Miguel has acted once again and taken the life of Antero Jr., a candidate for the presidency of the Republic. In this way the corrupt businessman, the man's father, who has taken over as candidate, and Nina also ends up being affected by the vigilante's search. The detectives on the corrupt side have managed to find out the girl's work address, because it was the place she used a few times to hack their system and when she arrives at her job one night, she finds her boss lifeless. So Nina, in a whirlwind of feelings, ends up running away from the place and going to the indoctrinator's hideout in order to get some support, however, this causes the corrupt investigators to discover the vigilante's lair. So, when Nina is explaining her situation to the protagonist, the men come in with guns and the girl ends up running away when she gets the chance, while Miguel finishes them off and then goes missing. As the vigilante's place has been discovered, Adu's doubts about his friend have ceased and he is now certain that he is the indoctrinator, after seeing his belongings in the hiding place. Then, on the day of a debate with the presidential candidates, Adu is on the alert waiting for his friend to show up and when he finds him, he even tries to stop him, but before he can be arrested, Miguel claims another victim, the candidate Julia, who ended up losing her life. A few days later, the vote took place and Antero was elected president of the republic. While everyone was celebrating the result of the election, the protagonist discovered that his boss had been involved in corruption schemes all along and so had a colleague of his. Miguel took a few blows to insinuate that he had fought with a guard and his colleague was assigned to take his life with the excuse that he acted out of self-defense, because he had supposedly taken the life of an agent. However, when his colleague is alone with the protagonist, Miguel defends himself and manages to finish him off. The protagonist then goes to the armory and takes all the weapons he believes he needs to finish off the president of the republic, who is his last target. Miguel goes to where Antero is and takes out everyone in his path. He manages to complete his objective, but before he can be caught, he activates a bomb in his car, which causes the entire building to explode. At that moment, Adu was on the viaduct that overlooked the building and saw when it was hit. Nina, who was on the run from the authorities, also appears to see the news and celebrates that the man has taken another one of the cogs out of corruption. However, the film ends with a message for Brazilian citizens, that people always find a way to cheat a doctor's note, a dispensation or something in order to come out on top, in this way corruption is within each one of us. We can even hate those who are in power with good reason, but we can't help but look inside ourselves, because there is also something to be ashamed of there, which makes us live within a cycle. What did you think of this movie? I hope you enjoyed the summary. Leave your suggestions in the comments and subscribe. If you liked the video, like it and share it to help me, until next time.